Well, the Vancouver International Mountain Film Festival is now on. It's online this year, and the roster includes more than 50 films about climbing, snow sports, the environment, mountain culture, and adventure. Well, Harvey Wright is a subject of one of those films. It's called Crux, The Climb Towards Mental Health. Uh, uh. It's scary and it's hard and I don't like it all the time. Harvey, hello there. Hello, how are you? Well, so I'm well, thank you. Nice to have you with us today. So tell us what, what was going on in your life that, that you needed to climb, you know, needed that purpose? Wow. Um, well, I, I spent the majority of my 20s uh, partying and DJing in nightclubs. Um, and developed quite a, a bad habit with drugs and alcohol. And what started out as quite fun at first um, started to lead to a lot of problems. Um, depression and a, a whole string of accidents that had kind of really brought me to my knees by the time I was 28 years old. And at that time in my life, I kind of decided that I needed to make a change. And I don't know why I chose rock climbing. I had really no, uh, <laughs> um, no specific athletic ability prior to, um, but I kind of started seeing people doing it on videos and, and hearing about people doing it in Squamish. And I, I kind of just got obsessed with it before I'd even started. And then it became a huge trans transformational uh, outlet in my life for the last five years. Well, it's good to hear you found that. But what what happens when you're on a rock face? I mean, we're usually down here looking up at, at people like you. What What's going through your mind? You know, I find that when I'm actually in the act of you know, movement on the rock. So that is to say when I'm actually climbing, there is not a whole lot going through my head. Everything seems to be kind of quiet and concentrated down to a single movement. Um, there can be quite a lot of anxiety that I get beforehand when I'm thinking like, oh, how's this gonna go? And am I gonna make it? And all that kind of stuff. But once you actually get into the movement of it, things seem to quiet down. And I think that's why it can be such a powerful activity for working through things like fear, anxiety, um, emotions. Um, one of the things that does happen on a rock climb or a climbing trip is you're going to go through the whole human scope of emotions possible. You'll have joy, you'll have fear, you'll have frustration, you'll have you know, excitement, you'll have connection with your partner, um, you kind of the whole, the whole scope of things. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a powerful activity. Well, and what would be, you know, a, a typical climb? Uh, I mean, how long would you be out for? I mean, it, it depends. Like, you know, one of the things as a newcomer to the sport five years ago, it did seem like quite an inaccessible activity to get into. It's pretty intimidating and you got ropes and you got these huge walls and it seems quite complicated and scary. But the more I did it, the more I realized that it's actually quite doable. And there's many different outlets from bouldering where, you know, you're climbing boulders that are 10 feet off the ground and you hardly require any gear all the way up to multi-day expeditions up 3,000 foot walls. So, and, and kind of everything in between. So really you can sort of pick the size and difficulty of your adventure and you could pick that commitment level. For me, since day one, I was in, always very interested in big adventures. You know, I, I would stare up at the chief in Squamish and just be like, I want to be up there. So. <laughs> Most of my adventures tend to be full days. Some of them go into multi-days, but you know, a typical summer day in Squamish, I'll drive up from Vancouver and spend maybe 10 or so hours 
on the wall and then come back down and yeah, come back for the sunset. It sounds, it sounds like you found your bliss. It really sounds like you found your bliss, but uh, what, what in the process of, you know, discovering, climbing, conquering those mountains, what kinds of things does that teach you about life? Well, you know, climbing is not always easy and it's not always fun. And sometimes I don't like doing it. And sometimes it is, um, well, scary and there's doubt involved and life is pretty much that way too. You really don't know what's, what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to come your way. And I think, you know, part of mental health and part of finding your way through life is really being able to accept and tolerate adversity. Um, because you can do your best to arrange your life in a sort of way that's going to um, tr- keep that away, but eventually things are going to happen. And finding a way to move through those experiences while keeping an open heart and a level of compassion for yourself and the others around you, I think, is, is what it's taught me. Well put. Well put, really. Now, um, take all of that and add in a film crew. I mean, what was it like to be the, the subject of, of this film? It, you had the camera above you as you're way up on that rock face. Yeah, I mean, luckily, the people making the film were my friends. Um, and I've never been on camera before and I didn't plan on having a movie made about me. I mean, it wasn't my idea. So it kind of all just happened upon me. And um, we weren't able to start shooting until this spring. Um, And I wasn't kind of sure how it would go, but it actually felt pretty natural. And the beautiful thing about it was it caught me out climbing a lot more this summer than I ever have in any of the years I've been climbing. And we got to go to some incredible places and meet some amazing people. Um, And, you know, I get so involved with the climbing that it kind of feels like the camera wasn't even there, you know, but I did, I did have a close friend on the other side of the lens, which made it quite good. Uh, It sounds like quite the experience. Well, thank you for sharing your story with us, Harvey, and, uh, and for sharing your film as well. All the best. Thank you.